welcome, Zoe. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to um, to introduce to allow a few seconds to introduce yourself, Zoe, please. Hi, thank you for the invitation. I'm Zoe Valerie. I'm in Kofu, and I come from dance. My art is dancing and dance therapy. And um, when I was younger, I believed that artistic activism was enough to change the world. And as time passed, I realized that uh, education reform is more likely to um, improve things radically and deeply. So uh, I was always teaching dance and movement. And the past 10 years, I've focused my art, which also, uh, as I said, includes therapy. So what I've developed over the past 20 years of working with full range of humans, um, is called Ensoma, and it's uh, basically about regaining and evolving neuroplasticity through micro movement and micro touch. So I'm focusing my art into educational reform, um, particularly for political situations where it's severely repressed. Thank you very much. Uh, what might be a threshold situation that you are facing in your life right now or your work? In other words, your personal journey of unlearning and new ideas shaping. When you say threshold, do you mean a point? Yeah. A critical point, tipping point. Tipping point. Exhaustion. Um, I'm a single parent. Um, I'm not financially comfortable. And I've been working voluntarily on this for 12 years now. But actually, my mother was doing it before me. So maybe it's transgenerational exhaustion is what the threshold is. Um, so alongside all of this act, voluntary activism was also environmental activism, um, activism for the rights of all creatures, etc., etc. So it's it's it is exhausting and i grew up in it and it's financially exhausting uh, so i think the threshold at the moment is how to uh, overcome the ex extreme exhaustion and um, how to get up again and get up again and get up again and keep going and uh, uh, how to network with uh, the right kind of partners who operate with a different kind of support system than what I'm used to at least, which is not so much uh, a spiral of uh, supporting each other multi-dimensionally it, it all it always ends up being a, a giving a pulling a sucking relationship but that takes a long time to explain what i mean hmm. we will come back in a way or another to this because without knowing you there were two concepts i put on the paper and this is me promising not to talk uh, <laughs> Please talk. Before knowing 
before knowing you, before meeting you today, I wrote two concepts. Um, decolonialization of learning or education, but again, I didn't meet you. And second was collective trauma, mm -hmm. or transgenerational trauma in learning or education. But, and, and maybe you just, just touch upon those a bit. Um, so let's see how this circle comes back. Um, Zoe, into what you mentioned, um, could you share a bit from your background? maybe two, three uh, people, events, choices that triggered, you already mentioned some, your journey um, towards democratic learning or free learning or education. Um, trees, I grew up in trees and they're, um, for me, especially one tree is, uh, one of my mothers and um, I spent my formative years in her and uh, she taught me about uh, combinational existence basically and uh, the dualism of the human world that I grew up in at least never made any sense to me um, and uh, in her, I basically it was the, the only place and in the ocean that I felt comfortable as a creature. As a child, I, I was not exactly an anthropophile. I found humans very difficult to understand. Uh, their cruelty basically was the most difficult thing uh, for me to comprehend and uh, their parasitic uh, behavior. Um, so nature, but uh, in, in general, especially the ocean and trees. My mother, who uh, basically has been uh, one of the most gentle warriors in the fight for the right to be uh, something that some someone who doesn't fit into the social protocol, let's say. Um, my mentors, I'm I'm lucky. My my mentors are are very very many. So. Maybe that's enough because you asked me for one or two people. Okay, thank you very much, Sai. I have to pay, pay tribute to the animals that I grew up with and all the births and deaths that I lived with them. But you asked me something else as well. I didn't cover your question. No, I think you covered it. Okay. <laughs> you covered it. Uh, very well, actually. <laughs> uh, what is emerging for you with reimagine education? What unfolds? What do you think it's unfolding for you still? Um, trust that uh, there is enough of a dynamic within the humankind to reinforce and support each other to, to shift priorities radically. And um, this is something very particular to my experience in the Reimagining Education Conference. Um, it, what is still emerging is a deeper and deeper sense of uh, security, even though the conditions are so 
let's say, um, threatening. In this conference, I felt that uh, maybe the kind of community that I have, that I'm envisioning and wishing and praying for uh, does actually exist and that uh, I and maybe we are micro community has somehow been missing it. So what's emerging is also very interesting questions of why and how we've been missing it. Thank you. And connecting to this, maybe, last but not uh, least for sure, how do we engage meaningfully with traditional wisdom for learning? and education? Um, deconstruct patriarchal systems which for me but also maybe objectively are completely utterly interconnected with capitalistic systems and colonial, colonialist systems and transgenerational trauma systems and um, put it back, traditional knowledge, back into nature. If we don't put it back into nature, nothing nothing makes full sense there's always something that is inconsistent and um, this causes um, maybe even subconscious confusion um, which doesn't allow us to to engage with traditional wisdom to be able to to sense it in its clean form because it's uh, toxic toxific toxification is uh, so old and ingrained that uh, it's it's kind of taken for granted whether you like it or not to some extent so if you take it out of the systems of patriarchy and capitalism and transgenerational trauma uh, systems and put it back into the systems of ecology, uh, I think uh, that gives us a chance of engaging, uh, well, to begin with, a new, from a new starting point, maybe engaging in a better way or uh, being able to make better use of, use of it, for sure. Thank you very much, Zoe. Thank you very much for sharing uh, sharing your um, you know, your journey, and not only for your compassion and for your emotional intelligence uh, message for reimagining education. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful questions. Mark.